Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we have Eric. No nickname this week, Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, we've got Tate, the big papa, Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Fantastic. Happy to be back. And look, you know him. You love him. Six Sigma. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I just want to remind everybody, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io. Your first note is free. It's the only automated set it and forget it payment system to automate getting paid. Um, if you haven't tried it, you should try it. It's free to start. Geekpay.io. All right. Well, we got a lot of uh, topics. I would say a lot of topics, but we got a really important topic to start with uh, for this week's roundtable. And this is something that I think everyone at some point struggles with. And I don't know if you ever stop struggling with it, but it's one of those things like you've got to like constantly sort of be aware of, right? And it's the mental barriers. And there's a lot of mental barriers, right? The first one's maybe fear of failure, maybe fear of running out of money, fear of running out of property, fear of success. So let's kind of tackle each fear and how, you know, you guys approach it. So let's just start with Tate. Tate, let's start with, you know, when you first started, what was your biggest fear personally? I mean, I guess my biggest fear was be the fear of failure, right? I think that's most common because here you are, you know, going on, you're taking this leap of faith, right? You're diving into a business where you might not know anybody personally within your inner group of friends or your inner circle that's done this before. It's not like flipping houses where you can go talk to just about everybody and they've had an experience with it. When it came to land, I didn't know anybody. And so that's why I really bonded to our community is because I was able to link up with people that were doing this business and were having success in it. And, and they were able to, you know, kind of guide me a little bit and, and give me that positive affirmation that I was on the right track, that I was doing the right things. And, and I think with that fear came fear of letting myself down, fear of letting my family down, fear of just failing. You know, I didn't want to fail at something, but once I kind of, accepted the fact that there was going to be a risk no matter what I chose, what avenue I, I approached, I was much more at ease with it. And I realized that I could prevent failure with my action, right? Action was the key to success. And I think it's, I mean, I certainly know it's the key in this business, right? If you want to have success, you want to sell land, what do you have to do? It's quite simple. Post a bunch of ads, market it like never before, be on top of things and you're going to have success. So that was my biggest fear when I started. All right. I, yeah. Uh, how about you, Eric Peterson? Well, you know, I, I think I can identify with Tate there. I, you know, a lot of what he just said is, is um, um, you know, exactly, exactly what, what, is there an echo? Yeah, I think it's Scott, because Scott doesn't have a headset no. on. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, you know, I think I felt a lot of those same things and, um, you know, I think I also did a lot of the same things to overcome those, um, you know, just a matter of, of taking action and, and doing something and proving it to yourself. Um, you can start to, I guess, you know, alter your mindset and see that, you know, there is room for you to have success and, um, you know, to be successful in the business. And, you know, I even think about, I've been talking with a family member um, recently about, the the uh the land geek program and um you know they're considering buying the toolkit or doing flight school and you know i mean they're having all those same fears that that i can remember having when i started you know it's like well do i want to put this money into this am i really is it really what it says it is and you know can i have success in doing this and um you know it it literally took just you know, taking that step and, and, um, and doing it, making the purchase and then, you know, 
doing the education, watching the videos and, and taking action as opposed to just sitting there and, and wondering, well, you know, should I get this list here? Should I get it there? How do I even do that? You know, instead just going after it and getting it done. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Scott, Ty, when you first started biggest fear? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I got you. I think, you I think my biggest fear was, you know, like all of the things like the fear, the fear of failing, but you know, like what I kept telling myself when, when I had self doubt is man, if these two guys can do it, then I can do it. And remember I was listening to the old podcast and you know, like I, I, I'm like, well, they, they seem like smart guys, but I think I'm smarter than them. So it was kind of like that self-confidence that you instill in yourself. Like, I can do this. I believe in myself. I think that that's kind of the first, the first thing that you can overcome or you need to overcome with any success is the, the belief in yourself. And then I think that, you know, you, you get these other things like, man, am I, gonna, am I really going to be able to sell these properties? Or, um, you know, am I going to run out of money? And I think that what happens is if you just keep going through the process, these fears, they kind of, you, it's, it forces you to attack them. Mark, um, you know, Grant Cardone has a great line. You and you and I kind of laugh about it, but you know, it's, it's create new problems for yourself, right? Because you're so comfortable. You're so comfortable in your little lifestyle. You're so comfortable in your little cocoon. You're so comfortable that you're so afraid of like messing that thing up that you don't grow. And all of a sudden, when you just like power through things and you're like, boom, we're going to do this. And all of a sudden you're faced with a situation that you don't know how to handle. You've created a new problem for yourself and it's a heck of a lot better than the old problem that you ever had. Right? So it, I think that that's one of the things it's like, I'm just going to keep mailing these things. And if I don't have any stupid money to buy more land, guess what? I'll figure it out when I get there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, f for me personally, I, I remember I've, I've gone through all these phases of fear. Um, you know, the first was fear of failing. Um, there's a lot at stake on the line for me, um, especially after I quit my investment banking job. And then as things started going really, really well, right. Then I had this fear of running out of property. Will it continue? And then I had a fear of, oh my gosh, especially when I started doing terms deals, I'm, I'm running out of money. And so each one of those things, I had to like step back and, and honestly, like for me, I had to talk to somebody else. Um, I really needed to bounce off my fears to someone else and have an outside party who's kind of gone through an entrepreneurial journey. Tell me that, Hey, look, what you're going through is normal and you know, everyone goes through it and you're going to be just fine. Um, what separates people that you know, make a dent in the universe and those who don't are the people that make a dent in the universe. They feel the fear. It's not like they ignore it. They feel it. And then they take action anyways, despite it where they don't let it paralyze them or they don't make impulsive decisions that are fear based. And when I think about my life, like all the worst decisions I've ever made or all the things that have ever caused any discord in my relationships have always been based on, I had a fear. And it's so simple, like, cause I know what, I know what I'm feeling it because I'm overreacting to it. Right? Like if, if, if I'm not overreacting emotionally to something, I, I know like, okay, this is not that big a deal to me, but if it's a huge deal to me, I know it's almost never about what it appears to be. Right. It's not about the money. It's about my fear of loss or my fear of something else. And, um, especially growing up with my parents and scarcity mentality and having this sort of, uh, you know, this vision of money kind of inculcated that, Hey, it doesn't grow on trees. You gotta be super frugal. Um, you know, we don't, we don't just splurge, right? You're not entitled to all these, you know, things in life. Like you gotta kind of suffer first to have anything good in your life. And this is like, I would see that. Let's go ahead, Tate. I was going to say, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, but then, you know, here's another thing that we see all the time, and that's the fear of this huge, this turning into something very successful. Exactly. And then, right. yeah, right, right. So, Tate, like, as you've gotten more successful, yeah. and you're kind of, you're kind of like fast. Your your success really came fast. What what was what were those fears like for you? 
Well, at first it was a fear of, you know, is this legal, right? Like, am I breaking the law here by having this be so successful? And then I was soothed, you know, I spoke with, you know, you and, and Scott and the, everybody else that I trust in this business. And they're like, no, you're just doing it right. And, and that fear was kind of like, wow, I've either, I've gotten to a point where I had to make a decision. Am I going to be a hundred percent committed to the land investing journey in this business? Or am I going to continue to dabble in it a little bit? Right. And that was, that was a big decision too. When I fully committed to like, okay, this is what I'm going to do for a long time. It was scary because, you know, you take your future in your own, in your own hands and your own responsibility. And, you know, I was comfortable with it because I'd seen the results, but, and that fear of, of success, it was, uh, I think it was almost more, I think that was more scary than the fear of failure. Cause if I failed, I mean, I, Nobody needed to know about it necessarily. It's not like I was going to lose hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars if I failed, right? But if I succeeded and I don't know, it was just, it was, it was kind of overwhelming. It's hard to explain, but I decided I was going to be successful and I, it wasn't a mental barrier that, uh, that held me back for long, I guess. Yeah. How about, how about you, Eric? Was there any kind of, as, as you got more successful, um, you know, especially this last quarter. I mean, my gosh. Uh, were there any fears? I, I guess maybe a little bit. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's just, you know, I mean, I'm going to be quitting my full-time job at the end of the year. So I guess for me, it's probably just – more of like fear of, you know, losing that sense of security that you have with a full-time job, knowing you're getting a paycheck, even though, you know, I, I know my land business is, is doing just fine. You know, I mean, it's, it's been successful. I've had success in it and, um, you know, I've been doing it for a while now, but, you know, just, just putting that behind you, that full-time job is, um, it's a little bit to overcome and, and knowing, you know, I've got a family to take care of. I've got two young boys that, uh, you know, are in school and, you know, there's, there's lots of, you know, different financial responsibilities. So. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Scott? I mean, especially as you know, you became, I mean, you know, 68 deals your first year and then 192 your second year, I, you know, did that fear of like, can this continue? Um, or am I going to lose, you know, friends or, um, you know, my peer group, everybody else has these jobs and here I am biking every morning and I'm on the boat and, and it looks like, I'm you know, slacking off <laughs> with success. And like, did you have guilt or fear survivors? You I, know, guilt? I, think, I think when I got going, I felt this oblig, like when I left my corporate job, I felt this obligation to kind of do work and like try to put in a 40 hour week. Right. And it took me a lot. I felt guilty that I wasn't necessarily working. I felt like I was slacking. Okay. But I, I never really felt like it was going to go away. I just, I just keep moving forward. And that's kind of like in my own personality. But, you know, I think Mark, I think that that like you're hitting, you're hitting it like right on the, the head is that there's so many fears that people have that the minute that you can outline like what fear you have. Okay. And once you kind of like identify it, well, then once you admit it, if you will, then you can, you can address it head on. And it could be, it could be any of these things. It could be, it could be fear that, that you're not worthy of doing something, or it could be fear that, uh, that you're not good enough or, you know, all these things, but you just have to kind of take a mental shot of what, what am I afraid of? And then leaning in but I think a lot of it has to do with self-confidence. Like a lot of things have to do with self-confidence because, um, you know, I, I know that that's one that I, I struggled with. And even, even now I kind of struggle with this, even when times are low is, you know, like when slow, when sales slow down a little bit, you're like, Oh man, am I doing something wrong? But you just have to keep doing, you just have to keep moving your feet, right? Like that's what it comes down to. You cannot just sit idle. You got to believe in yourself and just move forward. Yeah. And then, you know, there's also that clarity about what you can control, what you can't control. And then those things that you kind of can control and kind of can't control. Right. 
And um, there's like, it's like a mix. And, and sometimes uh, that can really soothe you as well, knowing that, you know, I'm doing everything I can in the areas of my life that I can control. And then letting go of sort of the anxiety that you can't solve anyways of the things that you can't control. Like we can't control the market, right? That's just out of our control. But the things that we kind of can control and can't control might be which market we go into. So if we're going to a county, we're not yielding results. Yeah, that market we can't control. We did everything we could to control it. But then it's time to make a change, right? And then go to a different, different, hopefully better county in, until you start doing deals. Um, yeah. Is there any kind of tool that you guys use to help you, uh, you know, identify the fears and then kind of move past it? Scott, you were just shaking your head. Well, I, you know, like I just, um, you know, I know that you're, what, what's the, what's the app that you use? Uh, Streak, right? Like Streak. Streak. Okay. So, you know, here's, here's one that I've been playing with. It's called Your Chain, right? Your Chain. And is this your tip of the week too? No, no, no. And Jer- Jerry Seinfeld, when, when asked once like, Hey, how do you, how do you write so many good jokes? He basically said, I just write jokes every day. A lot of them are terrible, but every day I, I, I dedicate time to write new jokes. And when you do it, you mark it on the counter and just don't break the chain. And so, you know, like, you know, for the, I mean, if you're not seeing this, you, you just have to trust me, but like, here's, here's a, um, here's an, a, an example of one of the chains, for example, you know, like you, every day at 6 PM, I get a notification that says, did you, did you, did you break the chain? So you go in there and you're like, no, I didn't break the chain. Boom. You keep adding to it. Boom. You keep adding to it. And you'll see that over, over like the last, I don't know what, since I don't know, the last three weeks or so I broke the chain one time and it tells you down here, Hey, you got, you got 14 days in a row more than, more than a week long. And so then all of a sudden, because you're tracking it, because you're like, I'm going to do this thing no matter what, there's something mental about not breaking the chain and you're going to show up. So whether it's placing ads, mailing, whatever it is, exercising, eating healthy, eating a certain number of calories, whatever you want to do, put the goal in this app or any app. I mean, you've used streak mark. I mean, there's many others, but you know, come up with a, come up with a system and, and control the things that you can control because you can't control how many deals you're going to sell but you can, you can control how, how many ads you write every day and you can't control how many people accept your offer, but you can, you can control how many deals you're mailing out or offers you're mailing out. Right. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's a really a brilliant system and it's, it's a great mind hack to do that. And then your, your focus then is outside of yourself and your fears onto let's not break the chain, which I think is just a brilliant way of handling that. Eric Peterson, what about you? What's your process? Um, you know, for me, I think the uh, 12 week year program has been pretty beneficial, just um, planning out those goals and then the steps below that to actually, you know, achieve those goals. And that, that breaks down to those daily tasks of mailing, marketing, and, you know, all those kinds of things. And for me, having that plan in place, knowing what kind of is on my agenda for the next 12 weeks, um, helps me to try to focus in on those things and achieve those things. I love it. How about you, Tate? No, I, I, same thing. I have a list of uh, the top three things that must get done every single day. And before I go to bed, like before, after I brush my teeth, I lay in bed and I ask myself, did those things, did those three things get done? And if the answer is no, I get out of bed and go do them. You know, we were at, uh, when we were in Orlando just recently, that first night I was exhausted, but I didn't do number two. And so I got up at like 1030 at night, got on my computer and did it. And then I was able to fall asleep because if I don't fall asleep or if I don't do them, I can't sleep because I feel just so guilty. So same kind of concept as this app. I'm actually downloading the app right now. It seems like this would be really cool. Yeah, I, I do all of those things. I, I do the compass worksheet. Um, which if you're in coaching, you, you know that exactly what that is. Um, 
I do the 12 week year program. I do uh, streaks. And then I love the Tim Ferriss. Uh, if you just go on Ted talk or you Google Tim Ferriss fear setting exercise, he kind of walks you through his fear setting exercise and um, it's really helpful. And, you know, I do that quarterly and write that down and that kind of takes it even to another level. So hopefully, uh, you know, those, so that helps everybody who's, you know, and we, we all look, we all have fears, right? But I think the difference is identifying it, feeling it, and then being like, okay, it's just a feeling, it comes and goes. I'm not going to, you know, dictate my actions. I'm not going to make an impulsive decision based on a feeling, right? If you ever listen to your thoughts for like a minute and that, you know, that those thoughts are actually another person, you'd be like, I would never take advice from this person. This person flip flops all the time. One minute they're happy, the next minute, you know, they're upset. Like, forget it. I'm not listening to that person. They're crazy. So hopefully that helps. Um, Scott Todd, we're talking about another issue to, uh, to segue into another sort of topic. Um, automating the sales process. Can you kind of talk about what that means? Yeah. So every Monday night, um, if, for, for those people that are in coaching, we have what's, what's called office hours, right? And uh, last night, this topic kind of came up um, about kind of automating kind of the sales process. And we've seen this with multiple people uh, in different, in different uh, occasions. And I think that a lot of people, they want to go out and they want to automate the sales process. And look, uh, I mean, like we, we, we are, we are big advocates of automating things, right? Like I want to automate everything I can. I mean, I've got my, my light bulbs automated. My house lights are automated. All these things are automated uh, in my life. But the one thing that's not automated is sales. Now, marketing is automated. You have to realize there's a difference between marketing and sales. What's marketing? Marketing is getting people's attention, getting them in the store, getting them on the phone, getting them online, getting them to, to even, you know, begin the process of breaking out their wallet. Then like that stuff's automated. It's automated through autoresponders and stuff like that. But then when you start to get into sales, like, Hey, I'd like more information on this property. Do you want a robotic reply or do you want to deal with a person at that point? And remember for, I mean, like Mark, for a lot of people, this is a very big transaction. It's not $500 down or $300 down. It's a big transaction for people. And they don't, you know, in my experience, people don't just want to deal with some, somebody that's robotic. Now that said, someone on the call last night said, man, when I see, uh, you know, like when I see someone asking me for information, I just give them a link to, the, to this PDF and it's working great for me. Fantastic. But it doesn't necessarily scale in the long term. And, you know, um, it's just, you know, I just want to find out, like from you guys, are you guys automating your sales process or, or is that something that you're kind of handwriting emails and hand, you know, delivering responses or am I missing the boat here? Eric Peterson, what are you doing? Well, for, for quite a while, um, I've always used some form of templates um, and then I kind of add to them. Um, but for quite a while, I would include a link to the property um, in that first response. But, um, but I've kind of stopped doing that. I, I still use a template as kind of a, a starting point to kind of craft that email. Um, but I spend some time and, and try to, um, I guess, really get the potential customer talking and asking questions instead of just giving them all the information. So if they ask a specific question, um, obviously I want to answer that. Um, if, if they've already been to my website and maybe they've, they've seen all the information on my website for that property, um, then I don't mind including the link because it's at that point, it's just a reference. They already know that information. Um, but ultimately I want to kind of close that email with some kind of question that, that I think, you know, I want to encourage them to answer to kind of keep the conversation going. So, um, you know, I think that by just sending a link with information, you can certainly have success. Um, but I don't know ultimately that you're going to build those kind of loyal customers that want to come back and feel like they, they know you well and want to work with you. Um, so 
yeah, I guess that's kind of my perspective on it. Tate, how about you? Yeah, I mean, sales, the sales part of this business, it's all about a relationship, right? So the last thing I want to do is give somebody an email or a link. That's the last thing I want to do, unless it's a link for them to make their down payment. But most of the time, I'll just help them process that on the phone. Um, and like, like Eric just said, I mean, how are you going to develop a friendship or, you know, these aren't one time sales that we're getting. Most of the people that I'm working with are paying me money every single month for years and years and years to come. So it makes a lot of sense to spend a little time up front, establishing a sense of trust and relationship with these people, right? Give them your cell phone. When they call, answer the phone right? It goes a long ways. It says a lot about you and the way you run your business and your character. I mean, sales is, it's personal. And um, it's not something I'm looking to give to somebody who, who isn't devoted to these people, right? I, I'm committed to them. And that's why it's one of the last things people should look to get rid of or get off their plate or outsource because nobody's going to care as much as you at first. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with what Tate just said. And when I started, I, my philosophy was not working just with this one person, right? I'm not working with Eric Peterson. I'm working with Eric Peterson. I'm working with Eric's parents. I'm working with his friends. I'm working with his cousins. I'm working with his whole entire network. And the way that I developed that relationship with Eric can ripple out and affect everybody because once Eric runs out of money, well, then he's going to feel really confident and secure recommending his network then to maybe buy the adjoining lot for me or something similar in the neighborhood. And I'm looking at like that and then, you know, moving forward. And then it's really easy once you establish that rapport. Hey, I know that, uh, you know, this is the right property for you. Do you mind if I put you on my VIP list and email you weekly so that if you do see something that, you know, works better for you, we can work together. Oh, and by the way, you know, it really would help me out if, you know, you uh, and I were friends on Facebook and I could just kind of, you know, message you once in a while uh, when we have a special deal because I think that, you know, I can find something that's just perfect for you and your friends, right? Or whatever it might be, but that's, that's how I, I, I like to approach it. It's not just that one person. It's, it's their entire network. And so a link or a PDF is not going to establish or cement that relationship. It's more a transaction than a relationship. Nothing wrong with it, right? You're going to get a few sales that way. But like Eric said, like Tate said, you're not going to get that loyal following. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a slow drip, but it's, you know, at the end of the day, that drip starts to add up. And now you've got, uh, you know, a massive, you know, loyal sort of, uh, land following, we just kind of get to the point where you can just pick up the phone, sell some property. Um, anything else that you guys want to add to that? No, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. All right. Well, we are at that point in the podcast now where we're going to put all of you on the spot and ask you for your tips of the week, a website, a resource, a book. Since the Zen master, Mike Zeno isn't even here. Are we even going to do a quote? Whatever it might be, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Let's start with Tate Litchfield. Tate, what do you got? Wait, Tate, you're on mute. Hold on. There you go. Okay. All right. So I've got a good quote. Um, I'm afraid to share it because I'm afraid of Scott a little bit. Uh, I know Mike's not here today, so I'm hoping I don't take the I don't take Mike's. Uh, Mike's normal criticism. But anyways, here it goes. One thing I've been working on is making my deal of the week email um, less spammy and, and land in more people's inboxes. So I was finding a way to test it. I came across a website that I started using last week and it's called spamcheck.glockapps.com. I'll send it to you guys in the, in the comments. Mm. But what it allows you to do is if you're using, you know, a Weber or MailChimp or one of those services, you can basically send your email that you would send to your buyers list and have these guys basically tell you, oh, it's going to be, you know, 
according to this, it's going to land in 70% of the inboxes on Gmail and 50% in Yahoo, AOL, Outlook. And it's got three different companies that it uh, compares it against. So it compares against Postfix, Mailgun, and then SendGrid. So it's a, it's a tool. I've been using it. I need to spend a little bit more time figuring out kind of the ins and outs of it because it doesn't necessarily tell you, oh, change this word and do this a little bit differently, but it's a good start. So I'm liking it thus far. Um, I've used it for two or three different emails and had fairly decent success. So, all right, Scott, bring it on. What do you say? I mean, you know, it's, it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's an okay tool, I guess. I mean, I have no complaints about it. <laughs> I was worried about this one. I debated even bringing it to the round table today. I was like, Oh, it could go so bad. What if Eric knows something that's way better than this tool? <laughs> but why not just write a good email instead of worrying about being spammy? <laughs> I mean, I am writing good emails. I'm not having anybody else do it. This is, this is one of the things that I enjoy doing. And each one's different. But still, I mean, the thing I'm trying to avoid is having it land in the spam folder, right? My emails are good. I just want it to land in the inbox. So people have to either click on it or physically delete it. Right. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. Well, I, I want to tell you, I, uh, I, I like this. I like, I got to figure out how uh, I'm on a little rant with the, against the children's place, but maybe you guys can like figure this thing out. Somehow I got on the children's place email list, right? Like, I don't know why, because my kids are teenagers. It's not the teenage place. It's the children's place, you know, for the little kids. I'm on their buyers list somehow these things just started coming up. I think someone like put me on it just to, to like mess with me. They email four times a day. I kid you not. They email their list four times a day. And I'm like, enough of this crap. I'm out. I go to unsubscribe. I have unsubscribed from their list no less than 10 times. Okay. And it says, you've been unsubscribed. It takes 48 hours. Well, 48 hours comes and goes and I'm still getting four a day. I can't take anymore. So somehow like their crap's getting through the Gmail spam, <laughs> spam filter. That's the system that we need to use. And we also need to figure out how to like, just ignore everybody's unsubscribe notice. Yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. How, that's how, I mean, cause like I set up filters in Gmail where it'll like, if it's from the sender, it'll just get deleted. I won't even see it. It'll I've done that notes. now, but I tried to like just unsubscribe. Oh yeah. But no, now I'm still getting their crap in my deleted file. Oh my gosh. Brilliant. I, you know what, Tate, I'm going to, I'm going to have your back. I thought it was a great. I think it's great. Just, you know, don't write Ye spammy stuff. Useful. Yeah. Don't write spammy stuff in the first place, but I'm yeah. using it more to land in the inbox, not the spam folder. Right. right. And my fear is that because it's being sent to thousands and thousands of people from a email service that it's automatically going to get flagged as spam. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the in, avoid it, but. in Gmail inbox, they've got the, the promotions tab. It's just going to go into there. So you actually actually have to ask your list um, to white label that email or your sender and show them how to do it. Otherwise, you know, Gmail is just smart. They're like, Oh, this looks like it's a promotion. It's going to go to promotions. Um, deliverability is a big, big deal right now in the email marketing world. And, and, you know, trying to get those deliverability stats up um, is a combination of, you know, using tools like this. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's your email service provider. They kind of go up and they go down where, you know, AWeber's deliverability kind of goes down and then all of a sudden constant contacts goes up and vice versa uh, or, you know, whoever it is. But, you know, the actual services themselves have issues. Uh, Eric Peterson, what's your tip of the week? All right. So mine kind of follows up on Tate's actually. Um, another piece of your, uh, your buyer's list email is the headline. And uh, I know we've talked about various um, headline tools before, but I found this one to be pretty neat. Um, you're going to have to give them your email and name, um, but it is coschedule.com slash headline analyzer. Um, I just stuck that in the chat. 
uh, and it's headline hyphen analyzer. Um, it is um, basically a tool you punch in your headline and uh, the, you submit it and it will give you a ranking based on your headline and it breaks it down into common words, uncommon words, emotional words, and power words. Um, and it gives you this whole explanation of why you got the rating you got and then it allows you to continue to modify that headline and try and improve your score. So I took one of my headlines as an example uh, earlier today, which was fly fisherman's dream camp next to the Rio Grande river. And I got a 59 for that headline out of a hundred. And uh, I played around with it for a while and uh, I ended up with magical getaway adventure for the spirited man. And that got 70. So I raised it 11 points by spending a little time with it and um, trying to incorporate some emotional words, some uncommon words and, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, I mean, I don't think we have the time to, to play with all of our headlines in this manner, but, um, you know, maybe some important ones or, you know, maybe you want to test something new for Craigslist ads or what have you um, might be useful in that sense. Coschedule.com forward slash headline dash analyzer. We will have a link to that. And uh, as much as it pains me to say it, Eric Peterson, uh, I actually subscribe to CoSchedule and that's how we do our, our, uh, our social media marketing. So I'm a huge CoSchedule fan. MeetEdgar.com okay. is also good for that, but uh, we chose CoSchedule. Scott Todd. Mark, I, I just used this tip uh, and I just t typed in a headline that's, that says, this is my headline, ready? This tip is great, but I have a better one, and I got a score of 74. Just saying. I don't <laughs> wow. Speaking, so there's something there. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> so that leads it. me to my tip of the week, right? See, I did that. That was smooth, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so check this book out. Um, yeah, I'm going to put in the, the link for you. It is How to Write Copy That Sells, the step-by-step -step system for more sales to more customers more often by Ray Edwards. And Ray Edwards is a like lifelong copywriter. What's so cool about Ray is that he created a framework for putting together copy. And, and basically his framework is called the pastor method. It's P A S T O R. And you can Google this. And basically what it's saying is that when you're writing something, when you're writing an ad, when you're writing copy and you use this framework, you know, you should, the P stands for problem. You should identify the problem, call it out, amplify it, you know, like agitate a little bit. Like, hey, are you looking for land? I'm just doing off the cuffs, uh, off the cuff too. So here, you know, are you looking for land, but not sure who to choose? So see how I like, you know, amplified the problem. Tell a story that's tied into the solution. That's the S. The T is to add a, a testimonial or to make it transformational. O is your offer, R is your response, how you want them to respond to you. It is a method for writing copy and Ray outlines it in his book. So check it out. Okay, I just bought it. So now this is the kind of book I actually need physically, right? I'm not gonna do an audio book. Yeah, I don't even think they have the audio book. Yeah, okay. So um, my goodness. How how good is Amazon, by the way? It's I mean, great, right? It's it's it, what a time to be alive. Like, it's so easy. I mean, if you if you need a like a like a business case study, look at Amazon and the way that they do their just the, they run their whole business. You know, it's simple, it's easy, it's uh, I don't know. There, Jeff Bezos is amazing. I, I love Elon Musk, but Bezos makes a profit. <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk, he doesn't seem like he finishes anything. <laughs> what are you talking, Tesla? SpaceX? Oh, it's not finished, man. It's not even profitable, Tesla. SpaceX, not finished, not profitable. The big dig, you know, on whatever it's called. Oh, the, the boring company. 
Yeah, the Hyper, boring, Hyperloop. Hi, okay, so before he's finished that one and proven it, what's he doing? He's now, he's, now he's looking to do something like Baltimore or something, somewhere else on the East Coast. Come on, man. Finish something. Finish something and make a profit. That's harsh. That is harsh. I, I, just, I just read his uh, biography uh, by Ashley Vance. The guy is just fascinating. Um, but, you know, he does have his critics uh, beyond just Scott Todd, by the way. So uh, that's, a, that's a great tip. Um, and everyone, look, I don't, I don't care who you are. Everyone can, can improve any part of their business with additional copy, right? Uh, and it doesn't have to be salesy, but it should in, include all those elements in there. So that's a great tip. Uh, I uh, now I'm embarrassed of my tip of the week because everyone else. And that brings tip. us to let freedom ring. And <laughs> let I want to thank the listeners. And uh, oh, okay, I'll do my tip. So check out. All right, I, I'm so look. I'm not a huge SEO person. Okay. That being said, I do like keyword research. I do like to know the language of the market, and I don't like overpaying for anything. So check out serpstash.com. I'll put the link in here, guys. Serpstash? Serpstash.com. And it's free. And, it's, and it gives you kind of like the most important things that you need for search engine optimization. What do you guys think? The, uh, the silence is deafening. We I got to it. input gotta... our URLs and explore. All right, all right, but it's cool. It's and look, it's free. If it's free, it's for me. I like it's that. free. It's for me. Enter any domain below to find keywords, competition, and more. Right, three steps: getting more visitors, analyze and filter which keywords are really already ranking in your industry, and who is ranking highly for the same keywords that you decide to target. Um, step two. Uh, is keyword research, display estimated monthly search volume, uh, CPC cost per click and market value for unlimited keywords. See relevant keywords similar to the one you enter and find your competitors for a specific keywords. And step three, a website audit. Run a series of tests on your website and get recommendations from Google on how to improve your website speed. Check your website speed, who is linking to you, site map structure and more. SER, SEO is hard enough, it shouldn't be expensive too. 21 completely free tools. I, you know what? I take it back. I, I'm, not, I'm not as embarrassed by this tip of the week anymore. You should be. I should be? <laughs> yeah, man. I think it's good. No? I don't know. I got to sign up. I'm still trying. I like put in my stuff and now it's asking me to sign up. Yeah, me yeah. too. I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, try, try I'm over stash. here signing up. Yeah, okay. Create your account. More spammy emails, exactly. Oh, now, now I'm never no. gonna be able to get off there. Hopefully, they're not like the children's place. Oh, God. you guys are killing me. Well, now I, you know how it feels to be Eric. That's true. All right, that's fair. So, I want to thank all the listeners. I want to remind everybody: if you're enjoying the Roundtable podcast, please do us three simple favors. And I even show you how to do it. Go to landgeek.com forward slash iTunes dash review and just follow those steps. But go to iTunes subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot at support at thelandgeek.com. A screenshot of your review. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit. And um, just a reminder, check out geekpay.io to automate getting paid. Eric Peterson loves it. So be like Eric and get paid on an automated way. Uh, are you guys ready? Let's do it, Mark. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. That's really not good. bad. Yeah. I, I think the secret is not to look at everybody. Just yeah, listen, I was just going to say. Go. You just, just let it feel it. You gotta sort feel of an it. organic kind of thing. Yeah, you just got to get into the cadence of it, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right, well, thanks, everybody. So, all right, is it lunchtime, Tate? Oh, yeah, definitely lunchtime. Where are you going? I don't know yet. Um, Allison's out with a friend, so I got to find something. I'm r flying solo today. You guys can meet halfway? Yeah. <laughs>
That's not a bad idea. That put them in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that puts exactly. us in like that puts Mojave us in County. Uh, Mojave County. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Williams, Arizona. Let's why would it. any why would anybody want to buy land out in Mojave County? Let's meet let's let's meet at the uh, the, the Flintstones campground. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> They did yeah. used to have a, a barbecue place on the way there, but it was always a, a weird place to stop at because you came over the hill and you went down and there was no cell phone service in the valley. So it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to stop here because it seems like this would be the scene of a bad terror movie because, you know, I'm going in for barbecue and no cell phone service. So I never stopped, but it was supposed to be good. You know, speaking of barbecue, we got to start thinking about San Antonio. Mm. Eric, you gotta come to San Antonio. There's not, it's not that it's not that far. Like, why wouldn't you come to San Antonio? Well, I've come to two boot camps in a row. I don't know. He needs a rotation. Hotels, airfare. He needs oh a rotation, Mark. He away from the kids. That's exactly why you should come to San Antonio. <laughs> Eric needs a break. <laughs> Honey, I got I got to do this. Sorry. <laughs> so I tell my wife, I'm like, I, yeah. I have to be there. You have to be there. I hope uh, she's not listening to this. And then she <laughs> figures out that 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 uh, does, it's not. Does your Does your wife listen to the podcast? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I tried once. My my kid, I, t- I tried playing like a like a podcast with the kids. Like, Dad, that sounds just like you. I'm like, Yeah, that is me. L- listen like, how smart this guy is. They're like, this is the most boring thing ever. Like, can, <laughs> can you put Jay Cole back on? I'm like, all right. Fine. I, Allison doesn't even know I do a, a podcast. I tried to tell her. It's like, yeah, we do a weekly podcast. She's like, like you, Mark, and Scott just talking. I was like, yeah, people like it. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> Who, who's listening to this thing? It's kind of defeating. <laughs> We, we actually have like people listening to the, like we got some feedback that people are like listening to this like bonus session. Oh yeah. Oh, I got yeah. One. yeah. 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 Like, uh, dude, did you know that you're still recording? I got one today saying, uh, good luck babysitting next week, this week. So, <laughs> you know, that's helpful. Yeah. For those of you listening to the bonus sessions, like please email us your, your tip of the week. Like someone's going to win the prize. But like so far, we've gotten like a few a few tips. Yeah, but they're that, weak. They, they were, were weak. super weak. Like they like I mean, actually there was one that wasn't so bad. But like we want something that's going to blow us away. We need an air table tip. The the collective intelligence. See what I did there, Scott? Yeah, yeah I see what you did there. There's there's nothing like my own self tip promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, how great great that tip was. Something yeah. like scannable. That was. That was hey, look, it's t- honestly, Scannable is great. I told you, it's awesome. It really is great. It's way better than uh, than Turbo, Turbo Scan, Scan but anything. it's a little. It's it might be a little slower though. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but. Meh. And then uh, Eric's tip that that app last week, I forgot the name of it. The street it was like a streaks one. That's like beautiful. And then they're like, okay, it's five bucks if you want more than three. I'm like, oh. Gosh, it's it was bucks. today. Today, that's what it was called. Did you buy it, Eric? I didn't. Yeah, I mean, because streaks is free, right? Yeah. What was it a no? Isn't it three bucks? Is it three bucks? It wasn't when I, I got so. it. I thought it was. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm getting more frugal on my app purchases. So, I don't know. I that explains why Apple stock is going down. I bought a really good financial calculator today. Oh, wow. You didn't get the app? You actually got a real financial calculator? Yeah, I bought one. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's 10BII. My, my Scott Todd geek- geekiness is coming out. I was like, this yeah. other one's no longer, it no longer meets my needs. So yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, w- I really wasn't planning on any math during this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank you. Talk so, you uh, all right. See you guys next week.